you see other companies that are posting every day and some other companies are posting multiple times a day. Yet, yet most people sit there and think, oh, I haven't got a scooby-doo what to do today. And I, 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 and I find that frustrating. Hello and welcome to episode 86 of Sharp Podcast, the personal growth podcast from SON Development, where we help you get better at the things you have to do so you can spend more time on the things you want to do. Now, this episode features a great chat with Rob Osborne from Red Knight Solutions. Actually, this episode kind of features two different things at the same time. So at a surface level, on the face of it, we're talking about managing your digital marketing and creating social media content in as short a time as possible. And Rob has a great system that you should try if you use digital marketing. Imagine creating and producing your entire social media content for a whole quarter in five hours. But the idea doesn't just apply to social media. What we're actually fundamentally talking about is the power of batching. How you can manage a large number of routine tasks in a very efficient way spending less time on the small stuff so you can spend more time on the important stuff. Just like our tagline, eh? Now, these same principles apply to loads of things that you might do. Invoicing clients, writing proposals, writing anything really, admin, planning and so much more. You see, our brains work more efficiently when we're allowed to focus on one kind of activity for a period of time. As opposed to constantly switching our attention across different kinds of activities. I've read that if you switch your concentration from one thing to another and then back again, it can take up to 26 minutes before you're fully focused again. Now, up till now, I was that switcher when it came to social media. At the start of each day, I'll spend 10, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour thinking about what can I share today before switching back to another task after I've done it. So I am definitely going to try this new approach. Let's dive into the chat then. We recorded this on a chilly January afternoon. Rob was in his office, I was in mine. We'd miraculously avoided the storms outside. Oh, and for regular listeners, you'll recognise one of the opening questions, and it's one that we've not done for a while. I think you're going to like this. So, Rob, I'm really excited about talking to you today, and there's an awful lot here that I think is going to be really helpful. But before we get into the subject, can you tell us, please, who you are, what your business name is, where you are, and importantly, what colour socks you've got on? Hi, Steve. Uh, So my name's Rob Osborne, and my company's Red Knight Solutions. Our offices are based in Waterlooville in Hampshire, uh, and we're a digital marketing agency. And um, you asked what colour my socks are. Well, the truth is they are black or at least they are above the sole. I know they've got a coloured toe and heel, okay. and I can't remember what they are. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd literally just remembered that I often ask guests what colour socks they got on. I don't know why I started doing it, but it just became a thing, which I guess it was a bit disarming or whatever. Um, I have had some interesting responses. Um, so digital marketing, that is a phrase that I hear a lot bandied around on, on uh, the intrawebs, and people talk about it. Um Here's a challenge. Can you tell us in one sentence what digital marketing is? No. (laughs) I love it. Two sentences. Uh, So, (laughs) in in summary, uh, I see digital marketing as the use of social media, email, and various web elements uh, to uh, be part of a business's marketing mix. Um, That can be paid advertising, free advertising, free content, um, or yeah, so, and the whole gamut of, of, of that. So it's quite a broad topic. Um, no, and that's interesting, actually, that sort of overlap between digital and traditional marketing. The good news is, from my listeners' perspective, we're not going to cover the whole range of digital marketing today, uh, if only we could. But specifically, um, well, I want to talk a little bit about how our listeners can actually manage, if they do their digital marketing themselves, some ideas you've got about that. Um, We, I'm trying to remember where we met. We met through Portsmouth Business Exchange, didn't we? We did, we did. Yeah, yeah. So uh, 
when I started redoing digital marketing uh, summer last year, now not this year, um, I bought some business exchange as well, the first place I started networking right. and we, we yeah, met there. Yeah, and, and yeah. actually, I mean, I always talk about Penny and Ports of the Business Exchange and Mark, and you know it's been a it's it's been a fabulous for the last six or seven months really for me. It's been fabulous because yeah. uh, I've met so many cool people, made lots of great connections, and I've learned how to network properly as opposed to what I thought was networking, which is pitching your services. Um, oh, yeah. Shout out to Jody Goodchild and the phrase pitch slap. I'll have to explain that at some point. <laughs> Um, anyway, so what we wanted to talk about today was, um, and I haven't got a catchy title for this episode yet. Hopefully by the time the episode launches, I'll have a catchy title, but, um, the idea of managing the, uh, your content or your marketing, your digital marketing, managing it like a project or managing it in batches. So instead of every day rocking up to your computer and thinking, right, what can I put out today and spending time and go and finding it and da 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 and before you know it, you're down a YouTube rabbit hole and it's 4 p.m. Um, matching some of those similar actions together. And you've got a particular technique you talked about, which, remember rightly, you called it your five-day challenge. Is that right? That, that, it, that is correct. That is correct. And, and I have designed it and I will be running it as a five-day challenge in the future. Um, but... The technique we talked about, um, what you really end up with for this is what I call a foundation level of content for your social media challenges, uh, for channels, not challenges, sorry. Because as you rightly said, the challenge that most business owners, being large or small, face is what am I going to post today or what am I going to post? Uh, you see other companies that are posting every day and some other companies are posting multiple times a day. Yet, yet most people sit there and think, oh, I haven't got a scooby-doo what to do today. And I, 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 and I find that frustrating. You know, uh, they, you know, it's the business owners find it frustrating. I find it frustrating for them because I think that digital marketing is a great opportunity for everybody. Social media uh, and websites, yeah. but let's, you know, just about social media. It's free. It's there for everyone yeah, to use, yeah. right? And and it's digital, so you can measure yeah. it. And yeah. that for me, that's the reason it's particularly interesting is because I am that person. You know, I will sit at my computer today and think, right, what can I put on LinkedIn? And then I'll reshare that on Facebook and Instagram. And I've done a post, and I, there is a bit of method to it. I do tend to sort of think about a bit of variety. So some posts will be about. Um, something interesting in my field about learning or whatever some posts will be a picture of my sweaty face while I've been out for a run um, and some posts will be me actually promoting the business so although I do apply a little bit of thought to at least making the 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 range of stuff interesting what I haven't done is taken a structured approach to managing that content which is really interesting because I am all about productivity <laughs> so this whole <laughs> podcast is about you know, being productive and, well, not productive because I don't like the word productive. That's, there's a whole episode about that. Um, but it's about actually, uh, you know, our tagline is getting better at the things you have to do so you can spend more time doing the things you want to do. And this for me, content marketing is something I have to do. I don't particularly like doing it, but I have to do it. Um, and if yeah. I can spend less time doing that, that can then free me up to spend more time doing training and workshops and, and and being with people so you've definitely got my attention here um and and, and i imagine for, for our listeners as well and even if they're not businesses promoting um content it could be individuals managing their own social media content and and these techniques can be applied to all sorts of stuff which we'll get into later anyway back to the five day challenge so we've got five five days five sections five hours if you like of, of activity um yeah so let's break it down at Hour one, what's the first thing you think people could do within an hour to get started to deliver this foundational level? Okay, so so within an hour, so, the, so uh, and for, it's important to understand the principles of what we're creating for how this, the, these break down. So what we're trying to do is, what, what are the aim is, is that you have a piece of content that you can post every day that, demonstrates your knowledge and experience in your business so it's like a default foundation piece of content so the first thing to do is come up with five key topics about your business so um 
which you can then expand on to create more content. So the, the, the reason why there are five is there are five days in the week. So you might po post about topic one on a Monday, topic two on a Tuesday, topic three on a Wednesday, that sort of thing. Now, as a digital marketer, the topic levels that I've got, and this is just gives you an example, is uh, currently on Mondays, I'm, I'm running a series of posts about podcasting because I've recently sort of launched a podcast. Uh, Tuesdays, I'm currently running content about email marketing. Wednesdays, the content is about uh, artificial intelligence and the use of AI, uh, because that's obviously a quite in vogue topic at the moment, for want of a better term. Thursdays, I'm doing about search engine optimization. And Friday, it's actually about content creation ideas. So they're my five topics, all right? So that's what you do in hour one. Okay. How do you come up with those five topics? Think about your business and just brainstorm them for a while. Um, you know, just use post-it notes, piece of paper, whatever. Come up with up to five topics. Come up with more if you can, right? And um, it's also not a problem to use the internet or we mentioned AI or just you can use chat GPT. Mm -hmm. If you're really stuck to come up with a list of topics, if you come up with more than five, keep them because you can use this for the next version of okay. this. So the, so the aim here right. is to come up with five relatively broad areas, five broad topics yep. that underneath yep. each of those, we're hoping there'll be a, a, a gold seam of content that we can, we can talk about. So not too exactly. narrow, not too specific. Um, and and aim for five and if you get more great and yeah for the traditionalists amongst us post-it notes or a flip chart for the yep. tech savvy people chat gpt ai or anything in between yeah. just to yeah. come up with yeah. five topics okay yeah okay so that's the first task in the challenge that's day one's challenge okay all right and then day two then <clears throat> or hour two yeah. or however we're structuring this, okay. what yeah. next yeah so so the next step is for each of those five topics is to come up with 13 points or relevant points uh, about it okay. so that you then, so effectively what you do, because what you'll end up doing is creating enough content to post for three months. There's 13 weeks and a quarter. So uh, hence 13. And similarly, you can you know brainstorm yourself to start mm. with, but get stuck. Just use Google or AI mm. to, to fill it out. Okay. The more you can do yourself, the better, because obviously you're really all about de demonstrating your knowledge and experience. And, and you can then, when you actually come to write the posts and schedule them and write the text above it, the more you're comfortable with it, the better the text that you can write. Yeah. And you made an important point there, I think. You've made several important points. But, the, but one of the things that jumps out to me, particularly in both of these two stages, is whilst you can use technology like AI to... Um, to stimulate your thinking at the end of the day the purpose of this is to show the public um, your authority your knowledge in in that particular area so you're not really going to do yourself any favors if you decide that one of your if one of my topics was going to be brick lane and um, I could come up with probably 13 bullet points for a topic about brick lane but the minute someone scratches beneath the surface and says tell us about your brick laying experience. I struggle a bit. Um, so I guess the watchword, particularly if people are using technology, is just to make sure they're using it to stimulate their thinking. But really, we want to focus on 13 bullet points that that talk to people about what we know and what we actually do. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Exactly that. Or, or, and it, or it could be the benefits of it. So for instance, in the email marketing ones I'm doing at the moment, some of them are things like the percentage of, of a person that looks at their email box and things like that. So okay. it's not a specific thing about email marketing, but it's a, a valid point about yeah. why email marketing is important. So yeah. Yeah, it could be a mix of those sort of things. So you've got me thinking, so for example, in, in one of the subjects that, that um, I run around coaching, the, the topic could be coaching. And then underneath the topic of coaching, there could be 13 different bullet points around why coaching matters, how to do it well, um, who are good role models, when and where do you do yeah. it? All that kind of stuff. So, okay. Yeah. All that. All that kind of thing. Cool. Yeah. Um, so that's hour two or day two. Okay. Um, yeah. Day three or hour three. What's next? Okay. Well, the next thing is to actually find some pictures to go with it. All right. Because actually, okay. what we're looking to do is effectively create a meme, which is like a, 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 an image that is made up of an image and uh, the text that you've just created in the bullet points. Right. So that makes the whole post. So 
you go to so if you've got your own images that you can use so you've you know photos that you've taken of work you're doing and things like that then use them because it's mm-hmm. much better to be able to use your own images and that than um stock images but don't be afraid to use stock images yeah there's lots of them out there so although although sometimes people can recognize a stock image quite a lot of them you can't yeah uh yeah it's pretty it, it's you know, not obvious these days there's so many out there um so for stock images there are a number of royalty free uh stock image libraries um available mm-hmm. things like pixabay pixel um uh, there's loads more i can't think of the yeah, others yeah. at the moment but use them uh and then you can you can go onto any of those sites and you can then start searching for images for those topics all right um and it will come up with a whole range of them and you just download the ones you like all right and then um so you end up with a with a pool of 65 plus images again quite often if you download more uh because what i find is as you go through and match them to the text sometimes you don't like them Mm. or sometimes they don't fit and having them more already downloaded uh gives you that chance to kind of work on it Alternatively, you can always go back and, and, and refine those those images at a later date. But uh, I always quite enjoy this bit, actually, because you've done some of the hard thinking bit in the first two stages, and now you just make it look pretty and just spend a lot of time looking at pictures. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you download them all. Uh, and, and I do, again, when I download them, I put them into folders. So I've got a folder for each topic. So that's interesting, again, so from yeah. a sort of a batching perspective you've got a folder per topic within that folder you've got your list of your 13 bullet points and your um 13 pictures yeah in yeah. that topic yeah th- th- yeah i was trying yeah. To, i was trying to divide 65 <laughs> by five and i've just realized it says it in front of me it's 30 <laughs> <laughs> and for today's yeah. left episode on maths um <laughs> now pictures uh it's very interesting, and I've got a reasonable amount of experience because I use imagery a lot in, in my work, in training design, um, in making the videos and the courses and so on. Pexels and Pixabay I've used a lot. They're really good. They're free. Um, and as long as you set the parameters right that you know the pictures are um, available for commercial use and, and all that kind of stuff, um, they're really good. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an important point also in terms of using stock imagery um, – about how it fits in with your brand. So one thing I mm-hmm. notice you do a lot is you you make the picture a bit opaque. So although the image is there, you can see the image under the text, You what you do consistently in every post is that picture's just got a slightly um, low contrast, sort of washed out look to it, which means that your posts are cohesive. They, they all appear mm-hmm. to come from the same place instead of just random stock images with all different colors in them <clears> and so on. Yes, yeah, and I think that's important to have. A, so, you know, you have to pick your own style. So, I, as you say, I use photographs, but you can use, you know, again, in, in those um, libraries, you could be using cartoons uh, or various other graphics because they're all there. In all my images, I've used um, photographs. Um, you know, so it's, it, and it's all about that consistency of brand and image yeah. as well. Um yeah. The other thing that um, I've come across, which is, is worth people thinking about, is uh, the formats of different um, different media. So, you know, Instagram likes square pictures, but it likes vertical reels. Um, LinkedIn prefers a more rectangular format to the picture. Um, so it's it's worth doing your homework to identify which um, which which format you're gonna uh, which platform you're gonna place them on, and then crop the pictures with some cropping software to make sure that they they fit nicely otherwise it all looks a bit weird when it's all twisted and distorted isn't it uh yes but what i will say as well because um i'm all about done is better than perfect Mm -hmm. so if you're just posting into one social media platform when we come to the next stage yes make sure that you choose um an image format that is the right dimensions for that platform okay but if you're if you're posting across multiple social media platforms, particularly if one of them is Instagram, uh, then it's better to just use a square one, right. use an Instagram base, because actually, if you post into uh, onto other platforms, yeah, the, the it, it doesn't they kind of resize and they don't, they're not too upset. So, for instance, yeah. 
um, because I post my content across all four, you know, so Instagram, uh, web, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Mm-hmm. I actually create them all as square mm-hmm. ones, so they're all square, and I use the same image across all of them, yeah. just for convenience. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, and it, the, it obviously it works best on Instagram because it's square, but actually it works fine across all of them. Okay. Um, that's just a little bit, bit of experience. Top tip. Yeah, I've lovely. Learnt. Nice. So yeah. just go for square ones. Also, if uh, you're running a business and you've got a bit of budget to invest in this, you can then invest in, in places like, and I use Envato, which is a paid platform. What I like about platforms like Envato is, A, it gives you a bigger choice of pictures. Um, again, all available copyright royalty free for commercial use but also it tends to give you images that that you may not see as often everywhere else so you get a little bit of exclusivity so so if there's if you've got a budget for that that's that's worth considering looking at something like that yeah yeah definitely and, and certainly that the, the um the royalty the free ones that we mentioned pixabay and uh pexels are both linked to paid uh, libraries and, and whenever you do a search there's a whole bunch of really nice images that yeah. go you could have these if yeah. you bought an account with us yeah, 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 um yeah. so yeah, yeah but at the moment i'm I, i'm in the gotta use the free stuff yeah absolutely category. absolutely sorry to interrupt your listening but i just wanted to jump in with a quick message If you've listened to Sharp Podcast for a few years, you might be wondering why we've been mentioning SON development and what that's all about. Are they a sponsor? Is it a house building company? Well, no. You see, we've been making Sharp Podcast since 2017, and it's always been our aim to give you free resource that helps you get better at the things that matter to you, and we're not planning to change that. But SON Development is the training company that I founded in 2021 to help organisations, teams and individuals improve performance and make a real difference to their working lives. We run workshops, we do consultation and we provide digital resource about leadership, coaching, sales, customer service, planning and prioritisation and loads more stuff. So if you're a business or a team leader and you're frustrated that your training isn't making a real difference, give us a shout. You can find out more about what we do at sondevelopment.com and of course there's a link in the show notes. But if you prefer to get your development free of charge with Sharp Podcast, would you do us a favour and just make a quick note now to share this episode or any that you really like with your friends, family, colleagues, anyone who you think it could help. We'd really appreciate it. End of interruption, back to the episode. let's just recap hour one or day one we've come up with five topics hour two or day two we identify 13 bullet points per topic hour three and this feels like a big job but a fun job we come up with 65 pictures which we split into across our five different topics so we've got our topics our bullet points and our pictures what's next what do we do on day four okay so day four is where you stick them all together okay right so uh you're, you're going to be using uh, you, whichever your favourite graphics design package is. The main two I tend to use are either PowerPoint or Canva. Uh, and in fact, so I, I, I used to do it in PowerPoint and I've now got over my Canva hangups and I use Canva. Um, and effectively what you're doing now is bringing them all together. So what you want to do is create initially uh, a template design that you like. Because effectively you're going to have three elements that's the picture the text that you've just created and you also want to brand it so put your company logo on there one you want to design decide where you want the text box so you can have a uh, across the bottom of the of the uh, of the of the post across the top of the post down the left of the post or the right whichever you want or, or a combination it's really up to you you design the look and feel that you like so play or spend a bit of time playing around with it and then effectively what you do is you could you, you start creating it so you bring your you import all the pictures for your topic set so you're going to do a topic set at a time is the easiest way of doing this mm. um so you import all the pictures so you upload them in. if you're using canva you upload them if you're using powerpoint you'll just bring them in as you, as you create each post um and then you 
create the first image, bring the image in um, and size it to the to the post, put your text box in place, put your branding on it. And um, once you're happy that you've got that laid out for one, you then, in, in, and I'm just going to talk particularly about how you do it in Canva, but you then literally just duplicate the page so it then moves it to the next one. Mm -hmm. You change the picture and you change the text. Okay. All right. And you just do that 13 times and you've created your 13 posts. So, uh, and, I, and I know we've, we've talked previously that Canva does have a pro version where you can do some of this automated, but mm -hmm. at the moment we're talking all about doing this as free as possible. But that's, so that's the technique of doing it. And because you've done all that other prep, this stage actually doesn't take very long at all because you're literally, here's what, yeah, once you've got the design you like, here's one, oh, done it, duplicate, done the next one, right. duplicate, done the next one. Um, so it doesn't take very long at all. Um, and, then you, and, then, and then you do another set for the next topic. You do all five topics. And you can, because of all the other prep you've done, you can do that in an hour wow. easily. Wow. Once, you get, once you get into the swing of it, yeah, because you're yeah, just yeah. doing a process. Yeah. You know? And there's a couple of things that really appeal to me about that. Um, I'm like you. So I used to use PowerPoint and Photoshop all the time. Um, and I dabbled with Canva over the years. Didn't really like it. Didn't get on with it. But one of the things I've, discovered about canva and this comes back to this principle of batching like things together is exactly as you say once you've produced one because you're effectively just duplicating that you're not building each one from scratch you can just change the picture change the text but the layout stays exactly the same it's i do that with the um the images are put out on the podcast so each each podcast episode has its image which which goes out on the, the file and we use in the social media and all i do is i just bring in the last one i did change the picture of the person that's in it or the subject, change the words, and there's a new image. So that idea of batching together um, similar actions, it does two things. First of all, it makes it easier to do. And secondly, mentally, it's less taxing because your brain is focused on that single activity. And as you said, it does become quite enjoyable, actually. You know, I, I like that creative side of, of, of making those things. So, um, so... With Canva, particularly, um, you can just manually create one, then copy it, change the content, copy it, change the content. Or, as you said, there are pro versions, either the paid version of Canva or other other platforms where you can automate some of that process, but we'll, we'll let people um, discover how to do those things. I believe there's a video yeah. channel called Your Tube or something that they can go onto and learn how to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not very, it's not very popular. <laughs> Um, <laughs> go on to YouTube and learn how to become an airline pilot in 10 hours. Um, my, <laughs> my favorite one, and I have talked about this a lot before, there is a video on YouTube that's 10 hours long called Watching Paint Dry. <laughs> Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, don't believe everything you see on YouTube. So again, I'll have a recap. Step one, we've got our five topics. Step two, we've got 13 bullet points per topic. Step three, come up with 65 pictures. Step four, create your Canva template and import your pictures and your text into the, the Canva template. What's next? Okay, so obviously the final thing with Canva is, each, one of the things we should have said, is, and it helps, is that um, when you, as you duplicate in Canva, right, you can name each image, right? So okay. just give it a name, a name that's relevant because actually when you download it, the name you give there is the file name that it actually creates uh, for yeah. the image. Yeah. All right. So that's just useful. Yeah. When you download them, that download the finished images, download them and save them in a file in a file area that mm. is named uh, and it, that, to help you do the posting. All right. So basically, you want to keep all of the topic one ones in one folder. Okay. Topic two in another folder. So you they're all together uh, for when you start doing it because. Day five is when you start. You can start posting and scheduling. Okay. So, on the um, five day challenge, the challenge on day five is to actually schedule your first week's worth of posts. So that's one from each of the five topic sets. Right. Um, and that's a, but that's effectively where you're at. So now you've so you've got sixty five posts that you're ready to go with. Yeah. So that's your three months worth. And so the scheduling. Now, if you're just using one social media channel, you're just using that tool in that product. Mm -hmm. So for Facebook and Instagram, if you're using Meta Business Suite, then you can use the planner in that to schedule posts. Just hang on a second there, Rob. 
Meta Business Suite. What's that? Facebook and Instagram are owned by Meta, hence why it's called Meta. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. And they've, like, they've produced um, something called the Meta Business Suite, okay. which sits across in- Facebook and Instagram. You can go in there and effectively you just click on the day you want to sh- schedule and effectively it lets you start putting your posts together. So you can upload the image. You then have an area for the text that goes into the post. And if you are doing Facebook and Instagram, you can either have the same post for them or there's a little button that allows you to effectively create a Facebook and an Instagram version of the same post. Okay. Now, the reason why you, you, you want to do that really is... On Facebook, you can include hyperlinks in your post mm-hmm. text, whereas on Instagram, you can't. Facebook doesn't really use hashtags. You're allowable, but most people don't use hashtags on Facebook. But on Instagram, hashtags are a big thing. Mm-hmm. So effectively, they're the two main differences between the two. And you may want to tweak the body work, or the, the, the body text that you put in for uh, Instagram to include some hashtags actually in the word in, in the body of the post as well as putting some hashtags at the end of it depending on okay. how, you, how you like to do it it's all about some of it's a bit about style so I, I quite like to do that okay yeah and, and then obviously if you're using X or Twitter it's got its own scheduling tool so if you're creating a post there's um, a little image that looks like a calendar on Twitter on Twitter or X you click on that that allows you to schedule the post yeah and also on LinkedIn, it's mm. got its own scheduler. Mm. Now, I've just talked about using all the native inbuilt schedulers. You can use other third-party scheduling tools, mm-hmm. Buffer, Hootsuite, yeah. or others. But people say that using a native inbuilt scheduler is preferable within the algorithm for, for those platforms. Now, whether that's true or not anymore, I don't know. But uh, I tend to still just use the, pl- just use the, the, the native ones because it's, it's there. And the way I tend to do it is I start with Facebook. I then copy that into Instagram. Okay. Um, as we've said, uh, I'm making the slight tweaks so I add the hashtags. I then copy that into Twitter. And then Twitter you have to play around with it because obviously it's got a much smaller uh, yeah. word count yeah. in the post. But I also copy the Instagram one into into uh, LinkedIn as well. And if I'm wanting to put a, put a, a hyperlink in, I will have... We'll put the same, yeah, the full hyperlink into Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, if it's in Twitter, I'll have to use something like Bitly to shorten the length of it, probably. Um, and quite often, don't, don't, it's just too much like hard work. <laughs> um, but that's how I do it. So basically, I do, do, do one post across all four platforms, schedule them, and then I move on to the next one. Okay. And I do one a day. So just to recap, we've got Meta Business Suite for scheduling posts in Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. On LinkedIn and Twitter, you can go in and schedule the posts in the platform itself. You, yeah. What you do, because I've done this a bit myself, you put the post up as if you're putting the post up now, but then you select the schedule thing and then you can project it for a later time. LinkedIn, yeah. I know, is a bit, LinkedIn's a bit weird. So if you want to make a change later on, it doesn't let you change the picture. You've got to delete the whole thing and start again. So yeah. there are some little foibles you've got to get used to. Alternatively, you can use a, a dedicated platform like Hootsuite or, or, or similar to, um, to, to do the scheduling for all of them. But um, we think it's worth doing it natively. And just so I've got clear in my mind, what's your aim in terms of how many you're setting up to schedule? How long does it take you to set up a month's worth of posts? How long would it take you? A month worth is a difficult answer because it tends to take between about half an hour and 45 minutes to schedule a week's worth. Okay. Uh, and then, so it's like trying to find, you either put that aside on a Monday morning, so you don't do the week each time. Right. Or you try and, you know, you just try and find that period of time and get as far in advance as you can. Okay. All right. So, you know, if, if you do the maths, what I've just said, it's going to take you between two and three hours, over, spread over a month to do a month's worth. Okay. Um. And it's just, yeah, so you just do it. So if you're you know, busy running a business, you do it at some quiet time. You could do it yeah. first thing in the morning, after work, at lunchtime. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, or actually, if you could just got a, a, a quiet bit, you can go, oh, I've got some posts I can schedule. Yeah, because you've already pre paid you can just, whenever you feel like it, you go, oh, I'll just do a few more. You know, obviously, the pressure gets on if you're starting to run out of, yeah, to yeah. schedule once. But otherwise, because you've got them there ready to go, 
Um, I mean, the only slight challenge is obviously thinking about what you're actually going to write in the body of the text. But okay. you've got the what you've put in the it, 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 on, on the main as, as a kind of starting yeah, point, yeah, and then you yeah. just want to expand it. And that's where you can get a bit more personal about the business, if that makes sense. And again, um, what I found useful is from an automation perspective, I'll often put a post up in LinkedIn before I press send or schedule. I'll control C, copy that text, post it, then go into Facebook paste that into Facebook so you're not writing it all from scratch. You can add the yeah. picture in and, and that process makes it swifter. Exactly. So yeah. this just with this scheduling bit then, this is really interesting because there's a couple of things that you're kind of um, uh, prompting me to think about. If you've got, let's say, you've got a dedicated hour a week where you're sitting there to schedule all your posts for next week for sake of argument. Um, what I really like about that is You've done the thinking, so the part of your brain that comes up with ideas isn't getting taxed. You've done the creative bit, so the design part of your brain isn't getting taxed. You've sorted them into folders so you know where they live, so the organisation part of your brain isn't getting taxed. That then makes the scheduling a a very routine activity. And it means that you can do that at times when even if your energy is a bit low, you've had a long day, it's not a difficult task to do. And this is what I really love about this system is it works with the brain, the way our brain works and not against the way our brain works because the different parts of your brain or the different skills you're having to deploy to think about a subject, come up with a picture, add a title on, put some stuff in there and then schedule it. It's actually using lots of different parts of your brain. And if you're doing that all the time, you're task switching between those things. And I think from memory, the, the, the time apparently when you're multitasking is takes 26 minutes for your brain to move from, the, if you're focusing on one thing to move to another thing, it takes 26 minutes for your brain to fully focus on that second thing. So by batching those similar activities together, you're working with the way that your brain works. In the clear course that we're launching at the moment, we, we we talk a little bit about batching. And in the locate stage, we're talking about grouping similar tasks together. And I talk about a shopping list. If you went to the shop and you get beans and cat litter and milk off the shelf and put them in your basket, you've actually got a batch there, which is your shopping list. It's a batch of similar actions, three similar actions. Take beans off the shelf, take um, milk off the shelf, take um, cat litter off the shelf, put them in your basket. And then you go home. If you went to the shop every time you wanted an individual thing and you got in your car and you drove to the shop and you got the milk and put it in your basket and then paid for it and then went home and then realised you need cat litter, life would become very difficult. What's weird is that we act as if we're doing that in lots of other ways we, we manage our business. We, we do disjointed, disparate tasks together and it really taxes our brain. It's not very efficient and it doesn't it doesn't work in line with the way our brains work and you know this idea of batching and so from a project management perspective if your folders are in the right place and you know what's in there and you can easily and quickly post things into your schedule it means then you can do the scheduling late in the afternoon when you're a bit tired or when you've got 10 minutes appears from nowhere and you've got it as a task for that week to do you can do it quickly instead of it being something you put off because you're worried about, oh, I've got to think about a subject and I don't really know what to do and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, this is fab. I love this. Yeah, yeah. And just one one other tip in there yeah. is in each fo- each of those folders you've got with all your images in, have another folder or a subfolder that's called posted. And yes. as you post each image, move it. Once you've pressed schedule on everything, because I, I, I've also learned that actually sometimes... Um, some of the applications don't actually upload the file properly until you've pressed schedule. So like I've, I've, I've moved it when I've done like the fourth one and then you go back to Facebook and goes, can't load that anymore because the image uh, isn't there anymore. All right, okay. All right, so you just got to, but, but by moving it out of the way, it means that you don't have to, you, you don't have to even have to come back to it and go, have I posted that one? Yeah, yeah. Or which ones have I posted? You know, you nice. just move them out of the way. Nice. So all that's in that main folder is the stuff that remains to be posted. Well, what you've talked about there, Rob, is the Kanban technique. So that is absolutely what the Kanban technique is, which is in its simplest form is, these are the things I have to do, another column of things I'm doing, and a column of things I've done. And you literally just move the, the post-it note or the card or the task from one column to the other. And at any moment, you can very quickly step back and see, I've got a load to post, so I need to set some time for it. I've got a load I'm in the middle of posting, so when that's done, they'll move to done. And as you said, the minute you've got some downtime, again, you can very quickly say, right, well, these six posts haven't gone out yet because they're in the yet to be posted folder. Um, So that's that's fab. I really love that. And and 
And and the other thing with that is it seems to become pretty close, where it, clear when you need to start thinking about doing your next quarter's batch. Right. Because you're suddenly going, I haven't got, I haven't got much left there. <laughs> yeah, it's quite <laughs> obvious. The shelf, yeah. the shelf is bare. Yeah. Fantastic. So again, very, very quick recap. First hour, identify the five topics. Second hour, um, identify three bullet, 13 bullet points per topic. Third hour, come up with 65 pictures. Fourth hour, create your Canva template. And then the fifth hour, set up your schedule. And then an hour a week or something like that, you're just sitting there and yeah. bashing away and posting them. Now, obviously, yeah. we'll put these steps in the um, in, in the show notes for the podcast so, so people can, can read it. But um, I really like this idea because actually you could apply that same logic to um, – creating proposals for clients or designing training or um or writing up notes because each of those acts uses different parts of your brain at different times so sometimes it's using the creative part sometimes it's using the sort of the brainstorming thinking part sometimes it's just process and routine sending emails and those sorts of things if you can break those down into similar tasks and then do the similar tasks together in that methodical way you can actually get a lot more done in a shorter period of time and achieve your goal of spending less time doing the stuff you have to do and spend more time on, on doing the things you want to do. Mm-hmm. What would be your sort of watch outs or your top tips for making this really work? What, what are the things people need to think about? Okay, so, so the things to think about are making sure you've put some period of time aside once mm-hmm. every quarter to go through that creation process um but also to put some to find that time to regularly do those posts uh, okay. to actually schedule everything okay. they're they're the biggest biggest challenge it's effectively time yes right yes and, and you know and, and the other good thing is once you've done this two maybe three times you almost don't need to do it again because right. you can reuse once you've done before because certainly for social media nobody's going to very you know well nobody's going to go back and look at your post from th- six months ago i know you know so you can actually almost completely repurpose the post even if, you know change the text if you want to change the order of them but um you know it actually means that once you once you've done it two three times you've got that foundation level there forever and it's likely to be different people looking at those posts anyway isn't it so it doesn't matter whether they're you're repurposing exactly them. obviously you know, you've just got to rev- review them so, for instance, obviously with the stuff I do, Facebook, Twitter, and all that other, those other platforms are constantly evolving. So, mm-hmm. whatever your tips are, you've just got to make sure they're still relevant. But if if you're happy that they're relevant, yeah. then you can you can repurpose yeah. them again six months down the line. And of course, there's nothing to stop you if something comes up as a subject of the day. You can still post about that subject. You're not you're not only Absolutely. putting this stuff out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This I think I said right. This, up. this is that foundation level yeah. that just gives you something to post. You see some people that are posting two or three times a day at times, and you think, how are they doing that? Yeah. It's because they've got diff- uh, these levels created. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh, and you can even create additional levels. So, for instance, uh, you and I both do podcasts, mm-hmm. right? So you can have a, here's the foundation level. Then actually, I do a podcast every fortnight. You do a podcast every month. So when we release a podcast, we do a whole bunch of other posts about them. Yeah. You, know, you talked about your clear course and things like that. You could be posting another layer a post relevant to, to specifically about clear or what you're doing at the time, delivering a course and that kind of stuff. Don't you worry. I'll be, I'll be using your idea. Absolute to promote clear when it's live. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so in terms of making it work, you said set aside the time you, you talked to earlier on about aim for good and not perfect. Yes. Yeah. Cause that's the other thing. People sometimes are so focused on getting everything perfectly right. Mm. Um, that they, they, they Again, they get into analysis paralysis yeah, and yeah. don't do anything. What I will say is it is worth making sure you spelt everything correctly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I fell foul of that today. Okay. And somebody somebody I know messaged me on LinkedIn and went, in that image you posted, did you know you've missed the R out of the first R out of WordPress? And I went, no. Oh, right. okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get it checked. Only one person's... Only one person spotted it, um, or at least have told me about it. Um, you know, and sometimes maybe it's a way of checking to see if people are reading it or not. Yeah, I've done that loads of times, and and to be honest with you, 
it, it, the golden rule is true. Get someone else to check it because your own yeah. brain is very poor at, at reviewing your own work. It's just, again, the way we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're built. So set aside some dedicated time. Aim for good and not perfect. Um, obviously, if you can, when you're setting aside that time, you're making sure that you know you don't get distracted by other things so you haven't got other Definitely. social media yeah. running in the background and those sorts of things. We talked about tools. So you can just use folders on your system. Uh, I use Todoist as, as my task management tool of choice. I have used Trello in the past. I know you'd said you were going to have a look at Trello and see whether that's interesting to you. There's, there's plenty of things out there. And again, most of them free. But the idea really is you're just using the tool to identify the tasks. And then when you come to do them, you haven't got to stop and think about what are the tasks because they're just there in front of you. You can just tick them off. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's really, really interesting. And obviously, as I said, I'll put all the, 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 the key steps in the show notes and people can have a listen again and so on. But yeah. what you've given us is a, a great tool for people, A, to manage their social media content or their marketing content, um, or they can use that same approach for all sorts of other stuff. So um, we've we've covered in a lot of detail something that I can't believe you're giving this away for free, Rob, that, that you know, you're happy to let people have this free of charge. I guess... Um, when people start getting into it, um, obviously there are going to be pitfalls and queries and things that people find challenged with. Clearly, you know what you can offer as a service to clients is is then the kind of the support where either you do all this for them, yeah, um, and they don't have to think about it at all; they just sign it off, or you coach them doing it, um, which means that you hands on can support people, and obviously that's where people would get their real value from you because this is. As you said, very foundational, very basic, nice to get up and running. Um, but when people start to think about what they're doing and then, then they realise they need your help and support, then they can come to you and, and you can you can help them in terms of the, the services you offer. If people did want to contact you, and I segued neatly into the plug zone here, um, <laughs> where can they contact you? So where are your places of are your points of contact? Okay, so uh, the website is redlightsolutions.co.uk. Um, and my email address is rob.osborne at rednightsolutions.co.uk. Uh, we're also on every social media platform uh, there is, pretty much. You know, the main ones, certainly you know, Twitter, or X, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. And our handle is usually Red Night Solutions. And make sure you pick the, the UK digital marketing agency, not the uh, US IT, consult- no, IT consultancy support company. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um- <laughs> This is absolutely fantastic. Obviously, I'll put all the links to all of those um, contact points for you in the show notes for the episode. This has been great, Rob. Thank you ever so much. You've really, you've really piqued my interest here, and, I, and I'm hoping a lot of our listeners will find this very interesting. And you'll get inundated with people that are going to need some uh, some help and support from you once they get into it. But you've you, you've really cool. helped solve a big problem for people. So uh, thank you ever so much. I'll see you soon at the next Ports and Business Exchange. Looking forward to it. What a fabulous approach. Five steps, one hour each, and it will enable you to prepare an entire quarter's social media content ready for you to publish in five hours. I'll put the steps in the show notes, but what you might like to do is to is have a look at them and work out how you can apply these same principles to other things that you do as well as your digital marketing stuff. How can you group together similar tasks as you do, process them quickly, and then free up your brain and your time for the more enjoyable things, the fun things, or the things that can make a big difference to your world. And if you want to share with us how you've got on, we'd absolutely love that. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook at SON Development, or on LinkedIn, it's Steve O'Neill. So share with us. Tell us if either A, you've used the five-hour model to manage and curate your social media content, or if you've applied these same principles to something else, the idea of batching similar tasks together. Tell us how it's worked. I'll put the links to all the places you can share it and Rob's contact details in the show notes. And that's it. Have a great month. Oh, and look forward to the next episode. It is another cracker, I promise. See you later.